America. He did not. And he came in here and told you you aren't even black and let you think a certain kind of way. It seems to me that should have been a nigga wake up call for you, but it wasn't apparently. Yeah, exactly. About time somebody called Charlemagne out on this fact. Because Charlemagne always want to play this stuff. But an old white man from the party of the KKK and Jim Crow and all these these racial things in America's past, an old white man that hung out with segregationists when he first got into the Senate, all this stuff, came on the Breakfast Club and told Charlemagne that if you don't vote for me, you're not black. Told Charlemagne that he have to do something because he's black. And Charlemagne just sat there and took it like a, like a, you know what? Like these people need to get out of the goddamn 1800s or, or even like 19, whenever Jim Crow ended. Uh, but we're not living in that time anymore. Right? Like get out of the, the past and look at the future and stop worrying about a hundred years ago. Of course it wasn't self-inflicted, but, but, uh, no, but, but, but there are a lot of, there, a lot of people have bloody hands in slavery. Mm -hmm. For example, slavery could not have existed had it not been for African chieftains who were selling black slaves captured, uh, in battle or captured through raids and selling them to European and Arab slavers. It could not have could not have existed without that. So everybody has dirty hands here. That's why reparations is such a foolish thing. If you're going to get reparations from the 5% or so of white people that have some sort of generational connection to slavery, and that's all there is, then you need to go back to Africa uh, and get money from African countries uh, that were involved in the slave trade and, the, and in the Arab slave trade. And by the way, the Arab slave trade was even worse than the European slave trade. 90% rate of attrition often making men and women walk on barefoot across the Sahara, and the men were castrated, uh, only about okay, five- so, 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 so if they go after the money from the other countries, then would you agree that it would be okay to go after the money from America? Is that when, your when problem it, when, with when, it? When, when are you gonna stop with this? Everybody has no, a grievance. I just asked a simple I'm just, question. I'm, 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 answering, I'm answering your question. There, no, there, there's no end, there, there'll, be, there'll be no end to this because slavery has okay, been part of fine, human Mr. history it's from a, the very beginning. Okay, We'd be now, getting money. I've let you talk, sir. I've let you talk. And every time I talk, no, you, you have talk, and then you say, let you finish. <laughs> so I asked you a very simple question. You said, if you're going to go after it in America, go after it in Africa. So if we all agree to go after it in Africa, will you then agree to go after it in America? It's just a simple question. No, yes no, or no? no, I won't because it's a waste of time. We ought to be spending our time okay, no on, on education. Next question. Okay, so, you, Matt, okay, okay. You yeah. told me that, that I cut you off. Then I try to answer your question. You won't let me finish. Exactly. exactly. Thank you. It's a waste of time. We ought to be talking about working hard, investing in ourselves. Right now, as we speak, there are Haitians uh, in Haiti lining up for a lottery to come into this country. Why? Because it is the land of the free and the home of the brave. You can go from nothing to something faster in America uh, than any other country in all of human history. We ought to be talking about that. Let me just, one more point. 1997, Time Magazine and CNN hooked up together to do a poll on what black teenagers and white teenagers felt about racism. Mm -hmm. And both of them were asked, is racism a major problem in America? Both of them said yes. But then Time and CNN asked this question of the, of the black teenagers. Is racism a big problem, a small problem, or no problem in your own daily life? This is 1997. 89% mm. of them said small problem or no problem in my own daily life. In fact, twice as many blacks said failure to take advantage of available opportunities is a bigger problem than racism. That was 1997. Twice, 1997. Look uh, it up. It's 2023, though. So it's even better now. <laughs> 1997, I'm sure racism was worse. Right, so it, it, I would assume it's better now. I mean, you dated. I mean, I'm sure that maybe not the the people that that think is racism going on in their day to day lives now, but actual racism, I would think that is probably better now in 1997. You think America's more racist now after the election and re-election of Barack Obama than it was in 1997? Yes, because of the election of uh, Maga, there we go. Donald Trump, 100. percent Yes. Really? Oh, absolutely. Well, how is it, how is it, uh, Charlemagne, that Donald Trump got 8% of the black vote in, uh, in 2016? He got 12% in 2020, a 50% increase. He got 20% of the black male vote in 2020. Uh, if MAGA is racist, how do you explain that, that Donald Trump 
substantially increased the percentage of black votes the Republican Party got. Sometimes people make. So why are you running against Trump, then, Mr. Elder? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not running against him. I'm running against Biden Harris. Any one of the Republican nominees we have would be better than what we have right now. I'm not running against him. I'm running to put forth the issues I just now mentioned that I've been talking about for the last few minutes. You know, I want to ask you about that. You know, after four indictments, 91 criminal charges, don't you think it would behoove the Republican Party to move on from Donald Trump? I think that the voters in the disagree. primary will make a decision. What do you? Why would why would we move on from Trump because he was was indicted by a corrupt DOJ and wep and politically weapon weaponized uh, state? Why we move on? For, that's that makes me want to support him more. I think that the voters in the primary will make that decision. What do you think, though? I have no problem with, with uh, I thought Donald Trump did an extraordinary job uh, as president, especially for black people. Best economy ever. He did something about the borders. The people that are most hurt because of porous borders are black people living in the inner city because most of the illegal aliens have little or no education. They end up living in the inner city. They compete against uh, black people with high school or less for jobs. Mm -hmm. There are about a million fewer black people working than, than who, who would otherwise be working if it weren't for illegal alien labor. And illegal alien labor, according to a study done by the Civil Rights Commission, puts downward pressure to the tune of almost $2,000 per year in the salaries of black people living in the inner city. And Donald Trump uh, gave us the most secure border we ever had. He also supported school choice. He also did the, the First Step Act, which allowed about 5,000 uh, mostly black men with long criminal uh, sentences, nonviolent, to have their sentences reduced an average of 70 months per. Uh, he pardoned Jack Johnson, the first black heavyweight champion. Even Barack Obama didn't do that. Yeah, he think, did an I extraordinary think, job for black people. I think you're innocent until proven guilty, but I feel like <clears throat> President Biden had four indictments, 91 criminal charges. Uh, you know, President Obama had four indictments, 91 criminal charges. Y'all would be telling them that they need to step aside and they shouldn't be running for president. Well, I wouldn't vote for Barack Obama or for Joe Biden in any case, no matter whether he had indictments or no indictments. I don't vote for tax and regulate liberals. Um, you're a conservative, right? Obviously. No question. What, initially, what initially made you gravitate towards being a conservative? I think it was my father. My father was a lifelong Republican, and my father always told my brothers and me the following. Democrats want to give you something for nothing. When you try to get something for nothing, you almost always end up getting nothing for something. And my dad, I told you about his background. He told my brothers and me that hard work wins. You get out of life what you put into it. You cannot control the outcome, Larry, but you are 100% in control of the effort. And before you moan or groan about what somebody did or said, do you go to the nearest mirror, look at it, and ask yourself, what could I have done to change the outcome? And finally, Charlemagne, my dad, told me, my brothers and me this. No matter how hard you work, how good you are, sooner or later, bad stuff is going to happen to you. How you deal with those bad things will tell your mother and me if we raised a man. I wrote a book about my father's life. It's called Dear Father, Dear Son, Two Lives, Eight Hours. It's about an eight-hour conversation he and I had uh, where at the beginning of the conversation, I thought my dad was harsh. He, I thought he spanked us too often. He, we, had a, we had a belt. In those days, uh, from the South, you spank kids. Uh, and I thought my dad was way too harsh. And we had an eight-hour eight hour conversation. And by the time we ended, my dad got bigger and bigger and bigger. And Larry Elder got smaller and smaller and smaller. And I apologized to him. And it's a book that that's changed a lot of people's lives. It's called, as I said, Your Father, Dear Son, Two Lives, Eight Hours. The paperback is called A Lot Like Me. Same book, but it's cheaper. Can you honestly say this is the Republican Party that you grew up on? This modern-day GOP? Yes. Uh, the Republican Party pretty much has always stood for low taxes, low regulation, uh, 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 peace through strength, not strength through peace, and strong borders, and still does. And and when Donald Trump is gone, and he will be gone, mm -hmm. even if he gets reelected, the day after he gets reelected, he's a lame duck, the party will still go on. The principles will still go on. However, I do believe that uh, many people in our party uh, have have uh, spent and spent and spent so that Ronald Reagan, my favorite president, when he entered the Oval Office, Charlemagne, uh, when he left, government was bigger. It got bigger under George Herbert Walker Bush. It got bigger under W. It got bigger under Donald Trump. And the only way to restrain spending is with an amendment to the Constitution to fix spending to a certain percentage of the GDP with exception for war and for natural disaster. Otherwise, we're going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Let me use the word unsustainable. Mm -hmm. That's the word Barack Obama used to describe the so-called entitlements. Uh, unsustainable was a word that Bill Clinton used to describe them. But nothing happens because if you run claiming you're going to reform Social Security or Medicare, the other side is going to accuse you of not caring about the sick, the poor, the elderly, and you are going to lose elections. That's why government gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So we need a law to restrain spending. Otherwise, it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. And for young people like you, uh, these programs are not going to be there. Mr. Elder, uh, I, I know a lot of black conservatives, and, and I, I 
I completely agree about the black family. I, I don't think anybody here objects to that. Don't I disagree just, about that at all. I, I think when you talk about ideology and then you mix in parties and then personalities, it gets kind of confusing. And, you know, you mention yourself not to moan and groan, you know, that as long as you work hard, all is well. And I think where the conflict is coming in is you did moan and groan about how the Republicans treated you. You did moan and groan about Governor Newsom and, uh, you know, asking for a recall. You did not leave that up to the voters. You are moaning and groaning when it comes to Donald Trump and how he's being treated. So it just seems to be a hypocrisy. And I don't know if the message would land a little bit better if there was some fairness across the board. This woman is so... This is my problem with a lot of these black women. And I don't know, it might not be uh, politically correct or whatever to say this, but a lot of black women are so passive aggressive and not all of them, because obviously not all of them, but they're so passive aggressive and nasty that like, and they think they know everything, but most of the half of the time they know they don't know anything what they're talking about. And I think the reason that they're so bad is because people in society put them up on a goddamn a, a pedestal. You, like black women can't never do anything wrong. They like Charlemagne say it all the time. Like these people, these black women, and of course they're the most anti-Trump freaking base too. Like Larry Elder earlier in in the interview was talking about how um, Trump gained with the black with black men trump gained from uh 16 to 20 um he gained he, he gained more black men votes but black women of course they're they're not going to vote for him because they're 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 probably the, they're probably the stupidest voting block in this country probably as a population of people not all of them obviously still is some smart ones and it's not because they're black either it's because i i think it's because that um they're overly emotional they probably a lot of them probably didn't have fathers in the home like larry elder was talking about um they're over emotional they didn't have fathers in the home and you can't criticize them and that's why that's the biggest problem i think with black people today you cannot criticize them without being called racist or uh a damn neo-nazi and I don't know if the message would land a little bit better if there was some fairness across the board uh, on Democrats and Republicans. I'm an independent, by the way, and I think both parties no, are not. trash. And I you're think all of us here, you know, see both sides. I and I, that's the part that's just not landing for me. There seems to be well, an unfairness on both sides with you. Well, not too surprisingly, I don't agree with your analysis. How is it that I did not leave the recall to the voters? What do you mean by that? What do you? You said you said again. you said I didn't leave the recall to the voters. No, you no, said, no. I said you moaned and groaned about it. You you said it should be recalled, correct? Correct. I said Gavin Newsom should have been recalled. Yes. Right. That's moaning and groaning. Well, actually, it's taking no, advantage it's of not. in the California Constitution, <laughs> which is when a certain percentage of voters sign it. What's moaning and groaning is what y'all do. That you you're just crying about an invisible white man that's holding you down. Every every what's moaning and groaning is the fact that. Larry Elder come up here and put out all these facts and statistics and y'all just cry about racism that you can't even point to. That's moaning and groaning. Petition to recall a politician. Uh, there can be a recall vote and there was one as there was in 2003. We recalled a governor then and there was in 20, 2021 when I attempted to recall Gavin Newsom. That's part of our democratic process in California. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. We, we agree with that. I'm going to your statement when you said rather than moan about it a little while ago, you said rather than moan about it, I'm just going to keep doing the hard work. And so I'm just saying that technically is moaning well, about it because I, the I governor is the side. I don't, so I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, point, I don't, I don't it's, follow, it's, I don't follow exactly what you're saying. I really it's okay. I, I didn't okay. expect you to, yeah, but it's, I'm, it's I'm, one I'm, moment. I'm a little, I'm a little slow one sometimes. Moment, one moment. Yeah, we get it. Yeah. One moment. Yeah, I don't complaining think, about the city. I don't think you're the slow one in that room, Larry. <laughs> I think you're, you're, you're probably, at the, you're probably the smartest one in that room. Honestly. I mean, I'm, I don't even have to say, I know you're the smartest one in that room. <laughs> I know you was being sarcastic when you said that. I know. Moment, I'm a little, I'm a little slow one sometimes. Moment, one moment, yeah, we get it. Yeah. One moment you're complaining about the system, and the next minute you're saying the system is is fair. The next minute you're saying it's not fair. So that's what I'm saying. There just seems to be a double standard on you and the system, not wanting to be accountable for a system that do, black do people I, are not do, in charge of. By the I, way, do I of not wanting to hold both sides accountable <laughs> when it comes to the system? You can tell Larry Otto would have reached through that dev screen and smack. <laughs> I don't condone violence.
as a metaphor. Do I believe Hillary was treated differently and Joe Biden treated differently than Donald Trump is being treated? Yes, I do. Is that an indictment about whether or not America is systemically racist? No, it is not. Those are two, they're, they're two, totally two different, two different things. things. Yes, you're, yes, you're trying are. to merge the two, but they're two totally different things. I agree with you. The two different still things. The no, it no, we're still, we're agreeing. We're agreeing. They're two different things. We're agreeing. No, we're agreeing the two different things. We're not agreeing that there's not systematic racism because we're not in charge of the system, sir. In case you okay, unfam- okay, all right, all right. Can we, can we? Black can, people can, have never been in charge of any system. Well, we're not actually, in, actually, actually, we, actually, we have been. Take Baltimore. No, we're, no, we've never been in charge. May, of may I finish? Any- now remember that she said black people have never been in charge of any system. Now I saw this clip before, so I'm you just gonna watch how Larry Elder completely destroy her with facts and logic and she's going to try to switch the argument but well, listen to what she just said black people has never been in charge of any system well, watch this well, no tell me what financial system are black people in okay, charge of let, let's what take... healthcare system are black people in charge of what government system are black people I'm, in I'm charge about, of about to tell what you. prison system are back... I'm, no black I'm, people I'm, in I'm charge. About ready to tell you i'm not talking about mayors i already know that talk, talking point sir i go on fox news all the time as well so let's not let's not go there with that i said what system have we created Goodness. have we implemented that we have been in charge of name one is this why you don't like talking to black women Larry exactly this is what i said Charlemagne always do this this is why you don't like talking to black women because they're so loud and obnoxious and don't know anything just scream over everybody i mean that, that's a good reason why i would say i don't like talking to black women even though i do i'm just i mean but that's how they are wow um ba- baltimore <laughs> uh freddie gray a few years no, no, ago no. that's mayors i'm not talking i said hey look Charlemagne just hyping up this clown this is why I don't like talking to black women, just putting a damn battery in her back to keep talking like a damn I'm going to like tell you system. about this system if you allow me to finish my point. I'm not talking about somebody elected and doing a job, sir. I asked what system did we create? What financial okay, system Okay, let's talk about the system of one yeah, of the let largest, him, let him say his point, thank you, then. one of the systems of one of the largest uh, uh, cities in America, Baltimore. Uh, Freddie Gray died in police custody a few years ago. Uh, the mayor was black. The head of the police department was black. Number two- uh, It's not person, in charge of the system. But go ahead. How is that not in charge of the system? What system are you talking about? Number two person in charge of the police department was black. All Still of, not in all, charge of all the all city council, Democrats, majority black. Six, Still not in charge of the system. Wow. Shut up. Six, That's a op- position. six officers charged, three of them were black. A judge before whom two of the officers tried their case, found him not guilty, was black. Still uh, not the, in charge of the, the system. The uh, city, uh, uh, intendant of public schools was black. The county superintendent of public schools is black. Uh, the attorney general at the time, Loretta Lynch, is black, as was the president of the United States, was black. And yet- Still not people... in charge of the system. Who's in charge I asked of the system? Question, well, well, what system are you talking about? He just broke down all these different branches of the system that was ran by black people, including a damn president of the United States. What system are you talking about? It's the same thing that that uh that they did with the the guy in um the uh Tyree Nichols I think his name was the guy that got the guy that got beat by them cops so he got beat by five cops in a majority black city the mayor I believe was black the uh the city council was had a lot of black people and I believe it was majority black um the police chief was black. All these people was black, but it's still white people fault. You, if you remember when that stuff happened, it was saying it was racism, the racist system. Meanwhile, everybody around the damn city is black. <laughs> like th- these talking points make no sense. Well, Wanda Sykes said uh, when when uh, when Barack Obama got elected, how are you gonna complain about the man when you are the man? Now, from the president to the attorney general to the state attorney uh, to the mayor to the head of the police department uh, to the commission of the schools in the city and in the county uh, to the majority of city council in that city, all of them are black. And you're still saying that we don't run anything? So who's in charge of the no, system? No, no, no. I, I said who created the system. I didn't say we didn't run anything. No, you didn't. You said who's in charge of the system. You, you literally said black people never been in charge of a system in this country at the beginning of this thing. Now you're saying, what the hell did she just say? That we don't run anything. So who's in charge of the no, system? No, no, no. I, I said who created the system. I didn't... Now you're saying who created the system. See how she switched her argument because she was getting obliterated by Larry Elder. Like you people are so stupid. 
to say we didn't run anything. I, I challenged a lot of those black leaders, by the way. I Look said, at Larry's Ooh. face. Look at his face. <laughs> he like, yes, the hell you did say that. That's why you started naming all that stuff, because that's exactly what you said. When we talk about the system, who, what black people have been in charge of any system? I'm not talking about a position. I'm not talking about a mayor. You know, oh, so you're, saying, you're, you're, you're basically saying that they're, just, so, they're black faces that are still in correct. those positions, so, but they're so, still correct. being part Similar of Similar to you, Mr. So, Elder, so, you're so, a black face in, in a position in the conservative movement. They're they're just the same. They're just on the other side. I'm talking about so then, we have so never then, been so then, so then, so then, when Martin Luther King said in 1966, I believe there could be a black president uh, in about 40 years' time, then it really doesn't matter if there's one or is no, there's, there's yeah, one. It, so nothing it, nothing he, changes. He was naive. He was also killed them. him as well. The, well, we know that the FBI and the CIA also killed him. That system, you realize that, correct? Wow, this woman is so nasty. An individual killed him. Right. That was also a part of Pro Hotel through the system. Cointel correct. Yeah. Uh, not correct. Cointel Pro. Not, not not correct. He was. So the FBI Pro. didn't have anything to do with it. The CIA didn't have anything to do with Diego it. Yeah, Hoover was definitely on Martin's ass. Like, come on. I didn't. I didn't say he wasn't. Oh. Uh, Robert Kennedy is the one that approved the wiretaps, but to say that the FBI killed him, I mean, what's your evidence of that? Oh, no, I, yeah, that's, I, that's, I, a, that's a pretty I, serious I, I, I charge. Yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. Pretty serious charge. Yeah. Serious charge yeah, requires serious about the evidence. Yeah. What is your yeah, 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 yeah. Shut your uh, dumb it is ass to uh, allow states to set up commissions of retired judges and retired DAs to get rid of these soft on crime George Soros backed DAs that are allowing a bunch of bad people on the streets or not charging bad people to the full extent of the law. And the people that by and large are hurt by these people are the very black and brown people living in the inner city. Mm. There's a, um, uh, Larry Krasner is a uh, George Soros back DA in Philadelphia. He's been impeached, but this Philadelphia state Senate wouldn't even take up the case. We've had two attempts to repeal a soft on crime DA in LA County. Uh, and uh, it, it hasn't gone through yet. Uh, we've got a bunch of, in my opinion, this guy, Alvin Bragg, uh, he ran promising to get Donald Trump. And when he got in, he said the evidence wasn't there. And then one of the former DAs writes a book, accuses uh, Bragg of giving uh, Donald Trump a pass. And all of a sudden, he brings counts against Donald Trump. I think it's unfair. Do you think members of your party are leaning toward fascism? <laughs> Define fascism. Authoritarianism. De define fascism. I mean, the rejection of democracy, the rule of law, and equal rights under the law in favor of a, a strong man, Donald Trump. This guy is so stupid. So he asked, do, are the Republicans leaning toward fascism? Meanwhile, as we speak, the Democrats are trying to arrest their political opponent. <laughs> you cannot make this stuff up. the rejection of democracy the rule of law and equal rights under the law in favor of a, a strong man donald trump who interprets the popular will uh no i don't mm -hmm. uh there was a long article about uh, barack obama by one of my uh, mentors his name is thomas soul he's an economist he's black conservative still alive right 95 years old and he wrote a piece in which he said a lot of people call uh, people like barack obama socialist socialism is government ownership of the means of production mm -hmm. fascism is when the government allows you to own means of production. The government tells you what to do. And he said, frankly, technically, people like Barack Obama are fascists. That is to say, these are left-wing people telling you how to run your business, telling you what to sell, telling you what you can't sell. For example, in California, we have a governor named Gavin Newsom who recently said by the year 2035, no more sale of new gas-powered cars. How dare you? Uh, most people don't want a, an EV. They like their own gasoline-powered cars, but now you're telling car dealerships they can't even sell them? What do you call that? But what about, you know, uh, when they, you tell women what to do with their bodies? Oh well, that is a moral issue. I happen to be pro-life, and I believe that uh, um, that abortion is a sin. That's Telling women that they can't kill their unborn children is not fascist. That's, li that's like, tell the government saying you can't kill innocent babies is not fascism. Right? Like, that's just more, that's just what people should do. It's not fascist. It's not fascist to tell me I can't go out there and shoot somebody in the head. So what is the difference? Is the government telling you you can't kill innocent life? It's not fascism. It's, that's just morals. Pro-life, and I believe that, uh, um, that abortion is a sin. That's not telling women what to do with their body. That's expressing my opinion about whether or not it is right or it is wrong. For example, there is a guy right now behind bars in Philadelphia named Dr. Kermit Gosnell. Mm -hmm. He is an abortion doctor who performed late-term abortions. When I ask people who consider my position to be extreme, I ask them, tell me at what point do you believe pregnancy has gone so far that to terminate the unborn would be, would be homicide? And almost nobody will give you an answer. Uh, so in other words, 
What you're really telling me then is this guy, Dr. Kermit Gosnell, should be set free. He's a political prisoner. He was persecuted unfairly. If you won't, if you won't tell me when you think at what point a pregnancy uh, cannot uh, be terminated unless it's, unless, unless it's homicide, uh, then to me you're essentially allowing women to, to kill the unborn no matter how old that unborn is. And I, and I think that's wrong. The other thing, Charlamagne, real quickly on this issue, it'd be one thing if the pro-life community was not talking the talk and walking the walk. But there are literally thousands of pregnancy centers all over America, whether it's funding for uh, adoption services, funding for housing, funding for education, funding for job training, uh, to let women know they have alternatives. And every state will decide this. The government shouldn't be passing some sort of law one way or the other regarding abortion. Every state's going to decide that. I'm in California, which is a deep blue state. There have been two initiatives to restrict abortion. I voted in favor. Uh, I, I disagree with that. I think the government should pass. Uh, yeah, I think it should be a federal abortion ban. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't really think this. I don't really think states should be allowed to choose to uh, kill unborn children in my opinion. Favor of them. I was overwhelmingly defeated. Uh, and when abortion has been put on the ballot in recent years, uh, the people that wanted abortion restrictions have lost. Mm -hmm. uh, the American people pretty much have said, first term abortions, they want them to be legal. Late term abortions, they don't want them to be legal. I happen to disagree with that, but I'm willing to live in a society that has a different point of view than, than I have on this issue. Can you have a real democracy if you're taking away people's power of choice? Like they're trying to take away people's choice to vote for Trump? Like these people scream democracy all the time so much, but they're literally trying to take Trump off the ballot or trying to put him in prison for political charges. And Charlemagne is celebrating it. Like how do these, how do these people not see the double standard and just like the stupidity of their arguments? If you're taking away people's power to choose, and not giving them any option. Well, if you it, consider it to be a, if you consider it to be a crime uh, that abortion is a sin, in my opinion, you're not taking people's right to choose. You're making a moral statement about what's right and what's wrong. I mean, there's a lot of sins, though. Sex before marriage is a sin. I'm sure you did some of that. Uh, as for the sins of my past, either the Lord has forgiven me or, or the statute of limitations well, forgive, has, forgive, has, forgive, has, forgive, has run out. I'm, I'm making a joke about that. A lot, a lot of people, <laughs> of course, make mistakes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And I think that people. Uh, but in my in my my morals personally i think uh killing an unborn child is worse than having sex before marriage that's just me should deal with the consequences of their actions and and if you uh, let people know their consequences to their actions it will inform their actions and make them behave more responsibly any any time you allow bad behavior to continue you're going to get more bad behavior whether that's so how does that apply to Tre president trump then because you said that was a two-tier si system that because um, i don't I, I don't so i don't believe i don't believe donald trump you don't he, think he did anything i don't think he did anything wrong no i don't i believe that he complained okay. about the election the same way hillary did hillary for four years referred to the 2016 election as having been stolen her word not mine she called Donald Trump illegitimate, her word, not mine. Uh, Jay Johnson, who's Obama's DHS secretary, testified yep. under oath. Charlemagne called Trump illegitimate. The Breakfast Club was saying Trump was a illegitimately elected because of the Russians. So these people, they, Charlemagne is celebrating Trump being arrested for basically denying a, the, the 2020 election was a, was a fair and legitimate election. But Charlemagne himself said that Trump was illegitimately elected because of the russians hillary clinton said that kamala harris all these people were saying this but trump should be in prison for it and yet they scream democracy <laughs> like that not a single vote tally was changed by the russians they tried but they failed to change a single vote tally 66 percent of democrats believe the russians changed vote tallies to get Donald Trump elected, Why even you though Jay like Johnson that? testified under oath, not a single one was changed. That's the damage that people like Hillary and former President Jimmy Carter uh, and Stacey Abrams and Hakeem Jeffries and others have said for years referring to Donald Trump as illegitimate. A greater percentage of Democrats believe 2016 was stolen than we feel that way about 2020, but yet nobody calls them election deniers and nobody accuses them of undermining our republic. And they're not undermining our republic. They're complaining about an election. You have a right to do so. I know, I know you probably got to go. Uh, <coughs> now, why don't y'all, why don't y'all address what he just said? Was that, was, cause I know all y'all denied the 2016 election. So, so why don't, why don't you, your dumbass Charlemagne address what he just said? I was these, I'm, I don't know how <laughs> Larry Elder sat through this whole thing with these people. What well, couldn't be me. Have you ever heard of the <coughs> term, a uh, nigga wake up call? Here we go. No. 
It is an incident where a person of color forgets that they are of color and are reminded rather brutally by an unexpected act of racism. Oh, Have you brother. ever had any of those? Oh, brother. I'm just asking. I'm just asking. You think you've ever well, had I'm, I'm acutely aware, Charlemagne, that I'm a black person, just as you are a black person. And when uh, Joe Biden insulted you by saying, mm -hmm. you ain't really mm -hmm. black, we don't mm -hmm. know whether or not you mm -hmm. want to vote for me or vote for Donald Trump, uh, it seems to me that should have been a wake-up call on your part. How dare this guy come in here and insult you, a black man, and tell you you got to think a certain kind of way. I'm amazed that you weren't mad about that. Yeah. Um, I didn't, I'm not going to say I, it upset me, just like I'm not letting you upset me. You know what I mean? I don't tend to get upset over things like well, that. But what I did say Well, well you was, just not, not talk about, about a nigger wake-up call, and it seemed to me that that should have been a wake-up call on your part to have a white guy come in here who also said, by the way, uh, uh, about Mitt Romney, um, uh, uh, because he didn't want to put more regulations on Wall Street, going to put y'all back in chains. And Joe Biden has lied for decades about his civil rights record, claiming that he desegregated movie theaters and restaurants in, in Wilmington, Delaware, when he didn't, any, didn't do any of that. He lied and said that he tried to visit Nelson Mandela during apartheid South Africa. He did not. And he came in here and told you you aren't even black and let you think a certain kind of way. It seems to me that should have been a nigga wake-up call for you, but it wasn't, apparently. Yeah, exactly. About time somebody called Charlemagne out on his fact because charlamagne always want to play this stuff but a old white man from the party of the kkk and jim crow and all these these racial things in america's past an old white man that hung out with segregationists when he first got into the senate all this stuff came on the breakfast club and told charlamagne that if you don't vote for me you're not black told Charlemagne that he have to do something because he's black and Charlemagne just sat there and took it like a like a you know what you aren't even black and let you think a certain kind of way it seemed to me that should have been a nigga wake-up call for you but it wasn't apparently exactly I mean, you know for the record I'm not a Democrat or Republican. yeah now I, yeah, okay. I didn't say you were yeah, I think both I don't know Democrats. what you are I, I never yeah. even asked you about your party affiliation who do you vote for though you voted for the person that said you had to vote for him or you wasn't black <laughs> Right. And of course, he said, I voted for Joe Biden for Kamala Harris. But yeah, OK, you still voted for Joe Biden after he said you have to do this because you're black. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying, but you are black and, and to have a white guy come in here and tell you you have to say uh, think a certain kind of way. Otherwise, you, quote, ain't black. Wow. How should I have replied to him? You think what I just now said? How dare you insult me and tell me I, I think as, as a human being, let alone as a black person? I don't tell you how to think, Joe Biden. How dare you come in here and tell me how, to, how I, I, I should think? I'm going to vote for Donald Trump if I want to vote for Donald Trump. And, and if I want to vote for Donald Trump, it does not make me not black. 20% of black people, black men, as I said, uh, voted for Donald Trump in 2020. Are they not black now? So only 80% of black people, black men walking around are really black, 20% are not, because they voted for Donald Trump. How insulting is that? How condescending is that? Mm. Exactly. I, I mean... You're probably right, but I didn't take it in that way. As well, I, I said, did. As I said, <laughs> oh, if if a Republican told you to do something because you're black, I'm, I'm sure you would have took it that way, right? Of course, you didn't take it that way. <laughs> in that moment, you know, it's just about me wanting something for my people, and I want to know what is he going to do for my people, and not only for my people now, how are you going to atone for the things you've done to my people? Right. That's it. Right, and this is a guy. They shouldn't be running on what they're going to do for black people in my opinion i think they should be running on what are they going to do for america as a whole and black people by extension will get lift up with the rest of americans they don't need they don't need to do stuff for black people in my opinion like why like a black people need to stop separating themselves from everybody else all the time because like do stuff for america like under trump when the economy was good for all americans blacks was bad was was better off stop Throwing these racial racialized policies and stuff. I don't I don't like any of that stuff.